بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الحمد لله in the previous video we have given to you this simple uh, questionnaire on how you want to evaluate anxiety uh, for those who are taking examination or test or presentation and things like that so we have complete the whole questionnaire the 10 question and the scoring system which I've explained to you in detail today I'm going to give you a much more detailed questionnaire on uh, the new system eh? all right this is from the panic care organization anxiety symptom questionnaire so there are a number of section eh? section a b c d e and f okay section a will cover panic disorder the range of panic disorder uh, so you, if you answer the question for panic disorder then uh, you will be able to then have a rating or score for panic disorder section b is agoraphobia all the aspects of agoraphobia will be in section B. Section C would be on social phobia. All forms of social phobia, you have to answer on that. Section D will go on to GAD, generalized anxiety disorder. All right. Section E would be on obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD. So if you answer questions on this, you will have the whole range. And section F will be PTSD, post traumatic stress disorder. So you can see this is a very comprehensive questionnaire that you can use as a basis of in in your for example as i say in the first phase of just realizing the problems of your client or the person who are you are coaching or counseling uh, you can use some of this questionnaire as a more or less like a exploratory kind of uh, uh, work so that you can then pinpoint what are the problems of your client all right that's why it's very important that we use these tools even though as i say these tools are circular tools you can use it until we develop a positive islamic cognitive behavior therapy list of questionnaires which then can bring in aspects aspects of spiritual emotional and mental aspect within the context of islam inshallah all right but this is a very good questionnaire and is a very good uh, indicator of the situation that you are facing for each and every one of your client or the person whom you are giving counseling uh, or coaching all right, so we can start this section A. Eh? All right, the question is: Have you ever had a panic attack? Yes or no? So if you have a panic attack, then you answer yes. If no, you just put no. Okay. If yes, have you had at least one such attack in the last month? If you have that one last one one in the last month, yes or no? All right. So it's a very simple thing. You just tick or tick. Okay. If yes, then you go to the next. Okay. If you had an attack in the last month, did you worry about having another? You had the attack, it's in your mind playing, oh, I'm going to have another one, I'm going to have another one. That negative inner speech eh, is playing in your mind, causing your anxiety. Or did you worry about the implication of the attack for your physical or mental health? Yes or no? All right, so you tick, okay? And then number four, as you go along, you can see it is progressing, right? Because if you say no here, then there's nothing much you can say on in so far as section A is concerned. So in your worst experience with anxiety, which are the following symptoms did you experience? Okay. So then it gives you the whole list of experience of anxiety in relation to panic attack. All right. For example, you tick what you have. That means from here, did you have shortness of breath or a smoothing sensation you know you just like being smoothed all right do you have dizziness or unsteady feeling you, you are not steady do you have heart uh, palpitation or rapid heartbeat do, 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 do you feel do you have the trembling and shaking feeling you you tremble when you are oh, trembling or oh. you, you become so high level anxiety you start trembling your whole body tremble or shaking do you end experience sweating of your body choking you feel like choking you feel like your breathing is almost like uh, you know you cannot breathe anymore do you have nausea uh, or sense of vomiting or ab ab abdominal distress uh, your abdominal feeling like uh, you want to vomit feeling it is like butterfly and things like that feelings of being detached or out of touch with your body you feel like you are not you you feel that your body is separate from you in a way uh, all right 
numbness or tin tingling sensation you feel numb tingling sensation flashes or chill you feel a chill suddenly you feel hot cold chest pain or discomfort you feel that like you're having like heart attack eh? fear of dying all right and fear of going crazy uh, people who have panic attack they think they are going crazy why this is happening to me why this is happening to me why 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 so am i going mad am i am i i mean so this is the question that they have so all these things you tick whichever symptom that you see is implicated in your client so they will tick and then tick and tick and then i'll give you a score later on eh? because now i'm just giving you this whole idea so section b would be on all right the section b would be on agoraphobia so this is again does you have fear having panic attack or cause you to avoid going to certain places or certain situation does you have that that means you don't want to go in a crowded place or do you want to go in an aeroplane or do you want to go in the place that is high or you don't want to go to the zoo uh, because you're afraid of maybe animals or snakes or do you, whatever all right do you have that situation yes or no kalau if no then you have no problem but yes then you continue if yes which are the following situations you do you avoid one going away going far away from home shopping in a certain grocery store standing in a checkout line all right which do you avoid that means you you you, you cannot go into a checkout line to queue to pay all right going to a departmental store or going to a shopping mall driving on a freeway all right in the highway driving on the surface of street far from your home you dare not drive far away from your normal area driving anywhere by yourself some people they have fear even of driving just to they know have the driving license but at a certain point they just cannot drive anymore they have a fear of driving using public transportation they have fear of using buses train or plane going over bridges going through tunnels riding in elevators being in high places going to a dentist or doctor office sitting in a barber's chair or high stylist chair especially if the barber is using something sharp scissors or a, or a shaver or something like that eating in a restaurant going to work being too far away from a safe place or a safe person all right being alone outside the house and maybe other related eh? so this section if you just tick whichever you have and then i'll give you the score section c yeah all right section c covers the test of social phobias all right number seven do you avoid certain situation because you're afraid of being embarrassed or negative evaluated by others other people are looking at you whether you look shabby or you're not up to standard or you're not up to the same level of social standing whatever that whatever it is or where embarrassment could lead to panic you feel oh, i'm not dressed for this occasion or whatever it is eh? if yes then you continue if no then you have no problem in terms of social phobia all right so if yes which are the following situation do you avoid because of a fear of, of embarrassment or humiliation you feel that you're going to be humiliated one sitting in any kind of group for example uh, in school you have or at work school classroom social organization staff have group uh, whichever huh? all right number two giving a talk or presentation before small group of people you have this fear all right and you, you try to avoid giving presentation number three giving a talk or presentation before a large group the next one is parties or social function you avoid parties if people invite you to parties you say no 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 you don't or any social function all right you avoid using public restroom however it is you try to hold your uh, need urgent need to go to the restroom but you you don't go you avoid using public restroom you only go to the restroom which you are familiar with maybe in your home or in your office eating in front of others you have a fear of eating in front of others writing or signing your name in the presence of others then dating with a partner any situation which you you might say something is uh, something become uh, will make you look foolish eh? all right so this section C, C section D will cover on GAD eh? generalized anxiety disorder do you feel quite anxious much of the time yes or no if yes have you been quite anxious for at least the last six months yes or no if yes then you go to the next one which are the following symptoms you have been experiencing one restlessness or feeling skid or on the edge you feel like only you're on the edge you you don't know why but you feel like you're not normal all right number two being easily fatigued you're always tired i know you always say i'm tired i'm tired you know you have this chronic fatigue syndrome difficulty in concentrating 
or, or mind going blank. Suddenly, when you're working, you just blank. You don't know what to do. Irritability, easily irritated, muscle tension, sleep disturbances. Uh, that means you have difficulty sleeping or staying sleeping problem, or even you wake up, you feel like sleeping back again. Uh, either extreme. Uh. All right. So this is section D. We'll give you on GAD. Section E will give you on OCD. All right. So OCD, you have, do you have recurring intrusive thoughts such as hurting or harming a close relative or you being contaminated with dirt or toxic substance or fearing you forgot to lock your door or turn off an appliance, recognizing these thoughts as irrational or anything related to that kind of thing. Alright, so this is on OCD and section uh, num question number 13. Do you perform ritualistic action such as washing your hands? Checking or counting uh, the doorknob, how many times you have locked, or the lights you switch on or off, or other irrational fear that enter your mind and then you follow that irrational fear. All right? So, section F would be section on PTSD, yeah? post traumatic uh, syndrome. Have you ever experienced a traumatic event which you felt intense here because you have either experienced or witnessed an actual death, or threat of death, or serious injury, or even rape? Huh? There's another issue where there's now very severe issue of PTSD in relation to sexual assault. Huh? Yes or no? If yes, since this, have, this event have experienced, do you have intrusive and dist dist distressing recollection of the event? Huh? Recurrent distress event, uh, dreams of the event, recurrent dreams, feeling the event was recurring, that means you are reliving it. Uh, it's like an illusion, it's like a flashback. Emotional distress, over the reminder of the event. You, when somebody reminds something that is associated to it, you straight away you get upset. You get into a anxiety mode. Physical distress over reminder of the event. All right. Then number 16, since the event, have you experienced one? Attempt to avoid thoughts, feelings, or discussion of the event. You try to run away from it. Attempts to avoid people, place, activities that remind you of the event. Difficulties remembering an important part of the event. Decrease in interest and involvement in important activities that is healthy. Feeling detached from others. Limited emotion. Expecting to have a limited future. You don't feel that like you have a future. And 17, since the event, have you ever experienced difficulty? Uh, falling asleep or staying, staying asleep. Irritability or temper outbursts. Difficulty in concentrating. Hypervigilance, exaggerated and startle response. Okay, so when you do that, questionnaire, all this sections then you can go into the detail huh? so for example in section a all right section a this section this is where you go to the question section a uh, this section test for the presence of panic disorder if you you answer yes to question one and two only uh, you do not necessarily have pd studies have indicated that seven seven percent to 34 percent of the general population have experienced occasional panic attack so you have occasional panic attack that's normal all right if your answer is yes to question three you are experiencing an important feature of a panic disorder. That is the fear of being having another attack or the fear of fear cycle. You have this fear of fear cycle. You fear that you're going to have a panic attack and you fear that fear of having panic attack and it becomes a vicious cycle. That fear can help perpetuate the development of further attacks and exacerbate, exacerbate the problem. If this fear of fear is causing recurrent attack, you have panic disorder. How do you know if the anxiety symptom you experience constitute a panic disorder? If you experience four or more of the symptoms of the four of the ten questions, you have panic attack. If you go back to question section A, okay, you can see that here. At, if you have one, you tick how many of you have of this, of this. If you have four more, you have heart palpitation, you have trembling, you have choking, you have this, you have this, you have this. That means and. Any of these questions in question four, if you have more than four, then you should seek professional help. All right? So you can see back again. If, the, if you have fear of the occurring attack, you have, uh, how do you, if the fear is causing a you have a pain, how do you know if the anxiety system has experienced a chronic attack? If you experience four or more of the symptoms in question four, within 10 minutes of the, of the period, you have panic attack already. So this is. Question, uh, section A. Yeah? All right. Section B, this is for agoraphobia. All right. Fear of being having too far or from a safe place or safe person or place or situation in which to escape, uh, which escape is difficult, or fear of being 
having help which is not unavailable. If you are fearing, a, if you are fear, experience a panic attack, if you check yes to question five, you may have agoraphobia. The situation check in question six suggests a greater degree of agoraphobia. You go back to section B. All right. So you, if you checked out, which are the one that you have because this is very specific. Agoraphobia is very specific. For example, fear of heights, fear of the grocery store, fear of driving far away. So if you check out any of these things, then, uh, for example, people are afraid of they rather use a staircase instead of going to the elevator. So this you may have one or two fear, but normally it is one. But that one could be very severe and affect your life. That means even you you, you go to a building that is high, you rather go the staircase, use the emergency staircase rather than going on the elevator, then you have this agoraphobia of uh, riding on an elevator. Or some people, they cannot go on a plane. Or some people, they cannot go over the bridges because when they see they, uh, even they, they are in a, in a bus or what, going over the bridges, they feel that the, the bus is going off into the sea. All right? So these are the kind of thing that you uh, experience in agoraphobia. Uh. Section C. Section C, test for social phobia. If you check yes to question 7, you are likely to have social phobia. The more situation check in question, uh, question 8 suggests a greater degree. So you have go back to, all right? C, you have sitting away in group or giving talk, presentation and so on. Okay, go on, C. All right? So in C, if you have, uh, if you answer, check in in question 8, suggest greater degree of social phobia. All right, this is question 7. This is question 8. You have very specific social phobia. All right, we go to section D. This is for GAD. All right, generalized anxiety disorder. If you answer yes to question 9 and 10, you are likely to have GAD. If you check three or more of the items in question 11, you have GAD. All right, we go, bo we go back to just section D. All right. So you have this, all right? GAD. If you if you uh, if you feel quite anxious, much of the time, yes or no? Have you been anxious at least the last six months? Yes or no? Yes. If yes, restlessness, feeling keyed, easily fatigued, difficulty in concentrating. If you have all these symptoms, then you are already having GAD. Yeah? GAD is not a very severe form of anxiety or depression, eh? but it is generally quite irritable that you make your life uh, more or less uh, not uh, uh, hopeful in a sense. Eh? Okay? So then we go to section E that is on OCD. Eh? So section E, you test for OCD. If your answer is yes to question 12, you are experiencing obsession. If your answer is 12 to question 13, you are experiencing compulsion. Answering both yes to either or both constitute OCD. So you go back. Section E, do you have recurring instructive thought as such hurting yourself, harming your close relative or being contaminated and things like that, or right? fearing locking your door? If yes, just now you answer, you have OCD. If performing relative action like washing your hand, checking, counting, uh, very irrational things that you do uh, over and over and over and over, all right, then you have OCD, Section E. Then we go to Section F, this score for PTSD. Yeah? So, section te test for PSD, if you answer yes to question 14 and check one or more in 15 and check three or more in 16 and check two or more in 17, this have lasted more than one month, then you have PTSD. You go back to PTSD. Okay, this is a very long issue. We have question number 14, number 15, number 16, and number 17. And if you checked out all these things to a certain extent, not 100%, then you you need professional help to check out on PTSD. So this is a wonderful uh, questionnaire in which uh, we have given you some idea in which you can use for uh, preliminary uh, while you are uh, in contact with your client. Uh, maybe you can do uh, not the whole test but very specific after, uh, after getting to know the person. You need not give them the whole A, B, C, D, E, F mode but you can pick one section and just apply it and see whether it is relevant to them. So in that sense, they would not be stressed out. Nah? If you give the whole test, maybe it is not necessary. But you must do some preliminary at your first session in terms of getting to know the person, in terms of building relationship. In the first R, that is for us to realize what is their situation, what are the kind of things they are facing, and how you can help them. 
the first R that we mentioned in our approach, the 5 R. Alright, remember the 5 R. So this first R, you can apply this and then maybe you can do this kind of questionnaire just like with your notebook. Eh? You put your notepad and then you can just ask a question and then you just tick and then more or less it becomes a very gentle approach to do a questionnaire without any intrusion and without the client feeling stressed out. Or you want to give a, a piece of paper and then sit down and then uh, ask them to do, do it as in your own time while you're out of the room and then they can take it out or before they come and see you while they're sitting in the, in the sofa. You can do it in many ways. Eh? There are many, many approaches inshallah as we give more and more toolkits, we'll be able to help you out to become a professional in the, in the way of applying positive Islamic cognitive behavior therapy inshallah to change our situation uh, to be a true and sincere servant of Allah, helping ourselves to make ourselves good, helping others to be good and making the world good, inshallah.